Hi, I'm Jonathan Dolan, Analytics GTM Specialist with AWS, and with me, Ori Nakar, a Principal Engineer from Imperva. And today we're going to walk through how Imperva leveraged Amazon Athena for machine learning botnets detection. Amazon Athena is used often by data scientists with Imperva to do various machine learning tasks. This is just one example of how they leverage Amazon Athena for that. We're going to talk about botnets and the data flow within this process. And then we're going to talk about the botnet detection development process. And afterwards, Ori is going to demonstrate the solution. So botnets is basically a word that is a combination of robot and network. Those are internet connected devices that are performing repetitive tasks. Often those are malicious attacks such as DDoS. The process, the data flow is that we have security events, which are basically malicious HTTP requests. We collect information on top of those security events and we group those into IPs and we have some additional features that are being collected. Afterwards, we run our algorithm and detect the botnets. The botnet detection development process is comprised of three steps. First of all, we query the attacks data. Once we query the attack data, we store the results as compressed CSVs objects within our data lake on S3. The detection process calculates a distance sparse matrix on top of the data that we queried and then run a cluster algorithm to detect clusters using Amazon SageMaker. The evaluation process basically joins the botnet detection from phase two with other data sources that we have in our lake and also with fresher data that exists. And we leverage Amazon Athena to compare between those experiments and get the be to the best one. We also leverage Amazon QuickSight in order to further drill down into the uh, results and improve our model. I'll hand it over to Ori to demonstrate the solution. All right, it's demo time. I'm going to use PyCharm to run a Python script and explain it. I will start by running an experiment in the background. Let's give the experiment a name. Let's call it reInvent 2020 demo and run the experiment. First step of the experiment is running a query. Before getting to the query, let's get to know our data source. I will move to the AWS Athena console and run a query. This is our attacks table. Each attack has time, attack site, and the attacking IP. And we have many records like these. Next, we will try to find IP pairs um, which are suspected to be part of botnets. So let's move to the next query. Okay, so we are going to join the attacks table. This is the a sample of the attack table with itself. Okay, to find pair of IPs which attacked the same site, different IP, with a time difference of up to five minutes. Okay. Let's run the query. We also uh, we are also looking only for uh, pairs which attacked 20 times at least and at least uh, five distinct sites. And we also uh, we are putting this data in the select close so it will be part of the output. So let's uh, look at the result. You can see here IP pairs, number of attack sites, and number of attacks. We will lose, use this data later on. Okay, let's go back to the script. Okay, so next we are going to run the, the query using create table as select. We're using uh, this option to write the results to S3. You can see, uh, you can use it to query your data and save it in different formats like a CSV or Parquet. I used the text file format to save GZIP CSV. I also used the bucketing option to control the number of files and their sizes. Not exactly what it was meant for, but it helped me to get to the set of files I wanted. This is the output location that I'm sending 
the, the query. And I see that the query is already done. So let's try to look at the results in S3. I will move to the S3 console. Okay, this is the S3 console and we, the data was written under this folder. Okay, and this is the, fold, the new folder for our experiment. And you can see here exactly three files with similar sizes, which were just written. Okay, so let's go back to the script. So uh, the next phase is to use the data in SageMaker. So we are going to start a, a SageMaker training job, send it a, a script to one. This is the entry point. We are going to use a, a, this is instance type and we're also using spot instances to save costs. This is the output location. And of course, this is the input, the folder that I just showed you. So let's go to look at the internal script which runs in the remote instance. So this is the script in the remote instance. We have here uh, empty sets and arrays. We are going over the files that were copied by SageMaker from S3 to the remote instance. And we are going in each files on, on the records. We are updating the arrays and sets and also uh, calculating the distances using the calc distance function. You can see here the calc distance function and you can see that it is using the features that uh, we wrote before by Athena, sites and attacks. And we have here uh, the expression to calculate a distance between two IPs. So when we get all the distances and uh, the rest of the data, then we create a sparse distance matrix and later send it to the clustering algorithm, which is in our case, dbscan. Here you can see also hyperparameters like epsilon. Once the clustering algorithm is done, we have the result and all we have left is to write the result. SageMaker will write the results to S3. Uh, sorry, we will write the results to the, to the disk of the remote instance and SageMaker later will take it and write it to S3. Okay, so I just want to, to, to say that unlike in the demo, where you see that the job is already done, you are going to process a lot of data, which may take hours. So, and SageMaker lets you run multiple experiments in parallel while your PC is free for your work. In the pipeline, we use both Athena and SageMaker for big data processing. Each has its own advantages and you can choose where to draw the line between them according to your needs. Okay, so let's go back to the main script. So the data, data was written to, uh, to S3 and now we are going to update our data lake with the results. First, we copy the results to a specific location and then we alter an Athena table with the, uh, ex the new experiment. Okay, so now when the results are written, we are in the evaluation phase. We want to decide whether this, this experiment is good or bad. So let's first, before we go to the, to the evaluation query, I just want to refresh a data set in, in QuickSight that we will use later. Okay, so back to the Athena console, we are going to evaluate our results. So uh, we are going, the, the, the query here will give us the botnet's results or the cluster results, and we will use Athena to join the data with the next week, sorry, with the next days of data. Uh, which is the 2nd of November. 
we will find how many of the IPs in each detected botnet continued to work together. Per site and cluster, we will count this number. And based on that, we will score our experiments. Let's say run this query. Oh, sorry. Let's run it. And you will see that uh, each experiment will have the number of clusters and a score. This is very important because later on we will play with the filters and the features and weights and distance function. And we have to know uh, for each experiment whether it's better or not. Okay, so this is a very uh, uh, this is a very important tool, and you can use the results. You can join the results with any other data set you want, and we find it great for experiment evaluation. Last, I want to show you a data set in uh, data set in QuickSight. This is the analysis. Let's uh, jump to the analysis that I prepare. Uh, in the analysis, I in the data set, I, I used uh, another column that I haven't used uh, in the pipeline, which is the, the attacking tool. So here, you can see here, this is my experiment. This is a pivot table. And I can see here my experiment. I can see the different clusters. And uh, per cluster, I can see the distribution of tools, number of IPs per tools, and attacks. This is very important because we can uh, find uh, the missing feature or wait uh, to improve our pipeline and to get to better results. That's it. I hope you enjoyed, learned, and can see why I like using these tools for my ML development. Thank you.